Hello and welcome to another episode of Clear Talk, the podcast sponsored by Solutions 360. So I'd like to welcome Patrick Britton, Senior Consultant from Navigate Management Consulting. Welcome. This is your first Clear Talk podcast. So glad to have you. Very happy to be here, Brad. Thank you. So one of the themes that we talk about at Navigate all the time is, you know, continuous learning, continuous process improvement, you know, the, the models of Kaizen, all those special words. And I think that's both in our DNA. So tell me a little bit about kind of the, your passion around it. Uh, so I, I think for, for anybody that, that has worked in the industries that, that we worked in and, and support, Brad, I think we know that nothing ever works as well as we want it to. Uh, and I've spent a, a lot of time throughout my career working with companies to identify gaps in their process and how to identify ways to improve them. And one of the things about Kaizen that really kind of attracted me to it was the, the concept uh, in Kaizen that everybody on the team works together to constantly improve themselves to gradually and incrementally increase the effectiveness and the efficiency of the organization through process improvement. And what I really like about, about that is that it's everybody on the team. Hmm. Uh, you know, and the ability for the, the person on a shop floor who's uh, fabricating a small part of a widget right up to you know, the executive vice president in charge of, of marketing, they're all focusing towards a single goal of getting better driving more efficiency. And, you know, one of my personal mantras, and I've told people that I've worked with this in the past is, you know, the day I, I wake up and stop trying to be a better version of me is the day that I've either given up or I'm dead and I haven't woken up. And I think that's a great uh, philosophy for a lot of companies to take to, to the market. The day that they stop trying to improve their process, they've essentially given up and they've let their competition gain ground on them. Got it. And again, I have a Big proponent of all those words before they were those words. So back to total quality management days, but you know, Deming days and all those. And what I find is a continuously learning organization changes it from like an obligation or a judgment to curiosity. A absolutely. And, and, and curiosity is what, what founded most of the, most of the organizations that, that we work with. It was a curiosity on the part of the founder. It was a curiosity on the, on the part of the inventor that said, if I do this, can I make a difference in the market? And, and you want to drive that curiosity throughout the team. So, so this, the whole concept of Kaizen uh, is, is how do I make my organization better? And if you're, if you're following that, as an organization grows, one of the areas where it often struggles is when it hits those, those plateaus in its growth and it doesn't know how to move to the next level up. It doesn't know how to scale up, you know, to, to use a, a Vern Harnish term, it doesn't right. know how to scale up to the next level. If you're, if you're practicing Kaizen, you're, you're constantly taking those small steps. So it's, you don't have to do a forklift rebuild of your processes to get to that next level. It's about adding in the right people for the growth, but the process has been growing growing all along. You just need to nurture it through that curiosity. And that curiosity is, is coming from information from all levels of your organization. Right. And I think people confuse, you know, like you said, the big forklift that's going to massively change things, you know, rearrange everything versus just it's incremental, small improvements. How do I take five seconds off of every termination? But if I multiply that by 50,000 terminations in a year, that's real time. So it's real time, which is real money. And you, you are absolutely correct. People, people don't realize that the, the little changes will yield more value to the organization over time, more dollars to the bottom line, more happy employees, more happy customers. Those big forklift changes in your process they impact a whole lot more than just the dollar value. You're going to invest more in making that happen. Right. You're going to upset the apple cart with your employees, and you're also going to potentially upset the, the, the relationship you have with your customers. So this, this incremental, small, baby step approach is, is a far healthier way for your organization to, to grow to the next level. It's well, growth I, rather than change. Absolutely. And what I see also is that it's not necessarily about improvement in terms of I have to make things better, but it's one of those, how do I get rid of waste? Yes. 
And that's where I tend to focus is like, as opposed to, you know, looking at being, you know, doing it quote better. How about if we just uh, get rid of all the drama that's keeping you from just doing it good? You know, I use the the phrase of when they asked Michelangelo, how did you create David or how did you carve David? And he said, I took away everything that wasn't him. To me, that's a huge premise of Kaizen is just get rid of the waste. And so these concepts of lean, Six Sigma, all these words are basically common sense, incrementally based without judgment. And, and that's the key there, Brad, is, is, is without judgment. And, and I, I agree with you 100%. When you talk about improvements, the word improvement implies that something is flawed. Right. Uh, and, and, and we all are flawed to a certain extent. But when you're working with your organization and you're working with individuals and you, you, you use words like eliminate waste rather than, get, than improve, uh, you get people that be more engaged in that process. You get them to want to be involved because they don't feel like they're being, being judged. Right. Uh, they're, they're, you're changing a process. You're not changing a person. And, and that really, I think, gets, gets that, that buy-in from the team. Absolutely. And again, when I look and focus it on the, and, and waste is just waste. Again, it's not judgment. It's not, we're not blaming anybody. Because many times the people working in something didn't build it. So it's like, what could we do better? How could we just reduce that? And those, again, those ideas, typically low-hanging fruit, we start to get the momentum going. So I think this is, it's got to be a cultural conversation also. How do you, how do you see that? Because again, you've been in many organizations. How did you kind of bring that culture of Kaizen into your uh, organizations? Well, I, I think it starts with, with, with conversation. I think it starts with letting everybody know that if they see something that doesn't make sense, it's, it's okay for them to ask. It's okay for them to make a suggestion or a recommendation as to, how it may be easier to do something differently, how it may eliminate some waste if they do something differently in the process. It's okay for them to say, I would do my job better if I got this from the person in the process before me. And to let the people in the process before them know that they can say, we can do that or we can't do that and here's why, but to get everybody to be engaged in that, in that discussion. If you have that openness and awareness amongst everybody in the team and the ability to be honest without being judgmental or without people feeling blamed, that's, that's, that's the best start that you can have. And then you just need to foster that. And you can regular conversations with the team. Celebrate the success when somebody brings you an idea that you can measure savings on. If you can look at how much over, over, over a quarter, how much time you've saved doing something and celebrating that success, you know, and, and a little you know, financial reward to the those ideas too is always a way to, to keep that team engaged and to build a culture around and i think a key perspective you just said there was measurement so a yes. lot of times i find people say oh well we've improved it well show me yeah. you you've know, changed it me. you haven't improved it until you see that waste is until eliminated. you say see what the result was so just a good idea without implementing just a dream and i think brad in this case it's it's fair to say that it, you know, through this process, more often than not, an organization at some point in this process will introduce a change that does not eliminate waste, that they thought would eliminate waste, right. and, and, and it just doesn't have the results that you've desired. And that, that's okay, too, because you're learning something, and you can go back and change, go back to where you were originally, and then institute a change somewhere different in the process to still try to attain the, the desired results. Well, it took Thomas Edison a thousand times to learn how not to build a light bulb. So, you know, if you're learning, it's part of the learning. So, and one of the, the things that I appreciate being here is that we, on our Navigate Academy, we do a lot of different modules that really focus on learning as an organization, as a person, but really adding value. And again, I think that Kaizen is one of those underlying premises of a company's existence. And it, it's, again, needs to be part of that DNA. So I encourage the listeners today, uh, one, be humble, uh, two, be curious, and then don't worry about the result too much. Worry about the learning and the knowledge gained. Um, and that's, to me, that that's the journey. I, I would agree with you, Brad. Again, I think you know the fact that you're moving in small increments 
the result takes longer to see than many people would like, which is why they look for those major changes where yep. the result is more measurable. But if you're on the path to improvement, if you're on the path to learning, the improvement will come. Well, and again, usually if it's done in an incremental fashion, it sticks. Yes. And that's what we're after. So great. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate your attendance. And thanks for being here, Brad. Take care.